are you a physician that came into the United States on a J-1 visa? If so, this video is for you because you're gonna to wanna to learn about the different types of J-1 waivers, the process, and that's what we're gonna be discussing in this video. If you're a foreign medical graduate who's completed residency or fellowship, you might be eligible for a J-1 waiver. J-1 waivers allow medical graduates to remain in the U.S. without fulfilling the two-year home residency requirement that's usually required when a J-1 visa expires. If you are a foreign medical graduate and you participated in a residency program, it's sponsored by the ECFMG, you're not eligible for a no objection waiver. So this is really important to note because you don't wanna spin your wheels on a waiver that you're not eligible for. So that's one type of waiver that you're not eligible for. After completing your training in the US as a J-1 visa holder, you're required to return to your home country for two years. Now you might be wondering why is that? Well, that is because the J-1 program was designed for you to sh go back to your home country to share your knowledges and skills with your home country. But of course, circumstances change, life happens, and that's why there's the J-1 waiver. You need to either have a J-1 waiver or fulfill the two-year home residency requirement before you can change status to an H-1B, an L visa, or apply for adjustment of status. What's important to note is that the only exception to the two-year residency requirement is the J-1 waiver. Now, there are some types of visas that you can apply for that could temporarily postpone you having to go home, but to overcome that two-year residency requirement, the J-1 waiver is the only solution other than going home, of course. Now, let's look at the different types of J-1 waivers that are available to you. First of all, let's look at the Conrad 30 waiver. The Conrad 30 waiver allows states to sponsor up to 30 physicians per year. To qualify for this, you have to work full time in a health professional shortage area or a medically underserved area, or in some situations a flex spot, and you have to work there for three years. There's also the interested government agency waiver. Medical graduates with the J-1 visa can request a waiver from the US government agency that oversees their program. Now to qualify for this exemption, the agency head must first give someone permission to request a waiver on your behalf. After the request is submitted, the agency will decide whether it's in the public interest for you to stay in the US instead of returning to your home country. And there's the exceptional hardship waiver. The exceptional hardship waiver, if you can demonstrate exceptional hardship to your US citizen spouse, US citizen child, or lawful permanent resident spouse, lawful permanent resident child, you can avail of this option. Now, the benefit of this option over the Conrad 30 option is you're not working in an underserved area for three years. You have the freedom to work wherever you want. And so that's why a lot of physicians choose this option over the Conrad 30 option. But you need to meet those basic requirements and be able to demonstrate exceptional hardship. If you think this could be an option for you, check out the other videos that I have, the other case studies on this option because that'll give you an idea of what is working. And then there's the persecution waiver. The persecution waiver is intended for J-1 visa holders who cannot return their home country due to the risk of persecution for specific factors such as religion, political opinion, or race. Now, how do you go about applying for a J-1 waiver? The J-1 waiver is a complex and time-consuming process and each waiver has its own unique set of requirements and its own process. After you decide what type of J-1 waiver you're eligible for and what you'd like to apply for, there's a variety of steps that we should look at in the process. So first, file an application with the Department of State and the processing fee. Depending upon the type of application that you're filing for, you do this simultaneously with the application that is also filed with USCIS. So for instance, if you're filing a hardship waiver, you would file the DS-3035 with the Department of State and simultaneously file the application with USCIS. If required by your program, you wanna secure a job offer from a government agency or designated underserved area. And if you're applying for the Conrad 30 program, you also have to submit an application to your state that you're applying to and get their recommendation and they'll forward their recommendation on to the Department of State. Once the waiver review decision is made a decision, its recommendation will be forwarded to USCIS. You should also receive a copy of the decision as well at the address listed on your application. USCIS 
then we'll make the final determination regarding your waiver and we'll let you know whether it was approved or denied in writing. As you can see, there's a variety of options here as a physician that you have that other people don't have, such as the Conrad 30 program. So that's the good news. Now it might be confusing for you, so I invite you to connect with us. You can give us a call at 916-613-3553 to schedule a consultation. Check out our other videos on the J1 waiver process and make sure you subscribe to continue to get more videos like these. I wanna thank you for taking the time to watch this video. By watching this video, you're bettering yourself. By bettering yourself, you're bettering your family. And by bettering your family, you're bettering the world. Bye for now.